Crash and bash of the dueling sword to the pure theory. And if the fencing starts before I've finished explaining, the fencers who are watching will know what's going on. But for the rest of you, I will try to explain what is happening. Here are the four men's foil finalists and the four women's foil finalists are coming on at the other end. The foil is not a real weapon. It is a training weapon. It was invented in the 18th century when people were still fighting in earnest with swords and the fencing masters dreamt up a sport which taught their pupils to stay alive in a real fight. The target is therefore only the trunk of the body, that part that you can see there covered by the lame jacket. That is the part where you would do real damage in a fight. You can only score by hitting your opponent on the trunk of the body. If you hit him on the arms or the legs, the lights will go on in the new equipment, but you won't get a, a hit for it. It's off target. And if you hit him on the head, the same thing. Although that could do a lot of damage, in the 18th century, it was a matter of honor that you didn't wear masks. You must also hit without being hit yourself. Now, the way the masters defined this was to say that the man who moved first in foil in a real fight, they felt that you ought to learn to stay alive, stop being hit first. So this right of way, the referee defines who moves first. Instinctively, the fencers ought to know. And if you watch, you can see which is the attack. The other one then, if he parries the attack, that parry has taken the right away from the attacker and put it onto the defender. Once you've parried the attack, then you have the right of way and you can go on. But if the defender then parries your attack, your counter-attack, your parry, it's simply a question of the one who moves first to threaten the target has the right of way until the other one removes that threat with a parry. Now you will see white lights go on and that means that the point has landed off target on the arms or the legs. On the left here we have Elvis Gregory of Cuba and on the right Jose Francisco Guerrera of Spain. Guerra is another astonishing finalist and what a lovely hit, he's just won. Now this, this young man, he's 27 years old, he's ranked number 62 in the world. Elvis Gregory, whom he's just beaten, is a Cuban, not the best Cuban, the world champion and uh, number one until today was another Cuban called Rolando Tucker. But Elvis Gregory was the bronze medalist in the last Olympics and he's just lost to a Spaniard who is ranked number 62. Wow. Now the next, this is between two men who might once have been in the same team. Dmitry Shevchenko on the left, Russian, bronze medalist in 1990, ranked number 12 in the world. And on the right, Sergei Golubitsky of the Ukraine. He lives in the beautiful city of Kiev. He's ranked number one in the world at the moment. And he won the silver medal in 1993. Now we've seen the score here. Go up. Ale. 14-5 here, and there's the one hit. Golubitsky made the attack, but Shevchenko parried the attack, left his point in line. Now let's see it, Golubitsky comes onto it. There's the parry, there's the riposte. The fact that Golubitsky continued to be off target doesn't matter. He had lost the right of way because his attack was parried. Now, Jose Francisco Guerra on the left. 
Dmitry Shevchenko on the right. And he seems to have blocked his way. So that attack was off target. You see the white light goes up there. Shevchenko Much more movement in foil fencing. There. There's Shevchenko's attack. And he comes back and he keeps pushing through. Guerra can't find it at all. I think that score is a bit wonky. I think the score is 2 0 now. There was only one light there, but um, that the attack was parried and then the riposte was on. The parry is that swipe of the blade that stops the attack. Oh, beautiful. Nice flick on. 4-0. As I said, there's much more movement in foil fencing. The fencers can take, they don't have to worry about stop hits or walking onto points. If you've got right of way, you know you can keep going. If your opponent hits you, so what? You've got the right of way. The reason for inventing these rules long ago in the days of dueling has disappeared. And now the theoretical sport that has evolved often involves allowing the hit to land knowing that your point was in, in line and attacking first. Oh dear. Six, zero. Well now, off target. Guerra has done extremely well to get this far, and the form that got him this far seems to have disappeared a little bit. Or at last, there's another one. At last, he's outclassed, or awed by the occasion. This is certainly personal best for him. The attack is through. Ah, perhaps I spoke too soon. He has broken his duck now, but... 1-7. Oh. He's over eager, <laughs> which has taken him off the piste. 1-8. It's a first to 15. Look at the speed of that. Oh. Beautiful attack and ends up on the arm. Wonderful flip riposts. Oh dear. Kara's spending a certain amount of time on the floor. He's certainly putting his heart into this, but... Somehow, he does seem a bit outclassed now. Shevchenko is very cool. Oh, a bit too cool. Good. Terrible punching attack from that angle. 2-8. Three. Mm. He's behind, he's far behind, he knows he has to attack, he knows that Shevchenko simply has to defend himself, he needn't score another hit. Just wait for the time to be played out and he's won. 
but in fact he's using Gera's eagerness, letting him come to him, letting him extend himself, then very neatly putting the point on like that. Beautiful. Oh, short. Oh. Same again. Parry with the point high and a black riposte onto the shoulder. I think the score's wrong. Okay, it's 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 twelve. What's he got out the count? Yes, that's that's thirteen, right. No, twelve was right. Good. Oh, just almost as Gera relaxes and then in comes another flick when he can't move. Off target. Shevchenko is so confident. I was on the leg. White light came up off target. Uh, both lights went up there, but Shevchenko moved first, it was his attack. I wonder if we could see that in slow motion. White light, off target. Only one hit. Oh. This is... Uh, one hit more for Shevchenko. It's an unfortunate defeat for Guerra at this stage, but it is the final. And for a man with his ranking, he's come a long way. Hold there, because Shevchenko was disarmed. Now that time we had earlier occasion when a hit was given on the hole. That was clearly after the hole. There's an attack that's on. That's it. Uh, he is Dmitry Shevchenko, bronze medal in 1990, and now with a Russian flag to wave, there is a Russian foil champion. Once he fenced for the Soviet Union, now he fences for Russia. And as a Russian, he is a world champion. It's unfortunate that the last final was not a bit more close, but Gera is someone to watch if he can get this far in a world championship. Join us for women's foil after the break. One, two, three, four.